Hey, everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin here in LA, and I'm thrilled to welcome Todd Michael Hall from Saginaw, Michigan, to talk about The Voice. Todd, how are you today? I'm doing great, Hillary. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's, it's an exciting night, actually, with the big finale up tonight. So, Yeah, well, having been part of The Voice family, Todd, being on the show the first half of this season 18 through the pandemic, you know every single artist involved in the big five. So I'm really curious to hear your insider's take on it. You know, it's, it's, what's interesting is like, I, I've gotten, even to this day, I'll get emails from friends of mine and people that I know, business associates, whatever have, you, whatever have you, and they will tell me, man, it was so exciting to follow you along on The Voice. It's just so interesting to know the person, you know, that, that you're seeing on TV. And I feel like as a contestant, you know, we, we have that, but amplified because we know all 40 of them. Um, and I, you know, and I don't know if people always realize it. I mean, you actually do become friends with these people. You just spend a fair amount of time in the same hotels and sometimes even in the same hotel room, you know, like Todd Tillman was my roommate. So I've spent a fair amount of time with him. And, uh, and it really does. You sit and watch with a totally different perspective because you know the people and all that, which is what makes it tough. Cause then people are like, well, who do you want to win? It's like, oh my Lord, I know them. You know what I mean? I can know them all. And and there's just so many good singers on the show this year. And, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun and really interesting to watch. Actually, one of the fun things is that with Team Blake, we actually had a Team Blake text group of all the original 10 people on it. And actually, just last night and even this morning, there was some text going out, you know, congratulations, Todd and Tanisha, great job last night, stuff like that. So we've all kind of stayed connected that way. So it's, that's actually one of the great benefits uh, as a contestant on the show is the friends that you make. And it just, it's, it's a very special experience to go through. And there's a special bond, you know, for the people that go through it together, which actually, oddly enough, back when they were, I was talking to producers a long, long time ago before I was even on the show, really, they told me that happens. And I was like, okay, you know, and, but after you go through it, you realize what they're saying. It's, it's a very unique, unique thing to go through. It's very interesting and a great experience. Well, you know, you and I have been talking since the season began, and you were one of my favorites. I have to admit, Todd, I was sad to see you go, but um, I know you're still, you know, you made friends with all these people, and especially Todd Tillman, you know, the two Todds being in the same room. But let's talk about some of their performances last night. Oh, man, I, you know, I watched last night, and in everybody, I mean, personally, it's like how they even got down to five because there are so many good singers on the show, really, and, and people with unique tones and unique skills. And I think one of the things you would see is that part of what you see in the people that make it to the final is that consistency. They've had they've had good song choices, so they kind of had that luck on their side. And, and they've also had consistent performances where, you know, they don't really necessarily drop down from week to week. And I think that's the tough part. It's kind of a stamina thing. It's almost like uh, running a marathon to make it all the way through. So it's pretty tough. I, one thing that I thought was interesting too is, you know, like you look at last year, Jake Hoot was a one chair turn and he ended up winning the whole thing. Yeah. And we do have, uh, you know, two people that, that like, I believe Cam West had two chairs and Micah had three chairs, but you've got three people um, you know, when you look at Tunisia and Todd and Thunderstorm that were four chair turns and they've basically just been consistently good throughout this entire thing. Um, to me, I thought like Micah and Cam, what was interesting about them is they kind of really came on like later in the game. I, like Cam, especially from like the four way knockout on, like his four way knockout really impressed me. And I, not that his songs before that didn't, but I, that's where I really was like, wow, listen to that. I, I, don't, I don't know why, maybe I just didn't pay close enough attention. And, uh, you know, I think Mike has been similar too. you know, he really lit it up during the lives. I thought that Elton John song he did was great. And so, you know, and then getting to hear the originals last night was pretty exciting. It's like, man, I don't know. It was, it was really interesting and fun just to, just to watch it and, and see them. And, and when you know them and you know what they must be feeling and going through, it makes it pretty interesting to watch. So I was having a lot of fun watching last night. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the show got off to really an incredible start. And just in these past three weeks of doing the remote shows, the production has really, you know, greatly improved. The bar has been raised. But to have Cam sing Purple Rain and, you know, have the Prince Estate clear it, that was really, really exciting. What did you think? I think it's pretty surprising to see that that happen. Yeah, because I mean, that's one of the tough things, because a lot of times people think you think you can sing anything you want. And the reality is that is one of the big things that that overrides it all. Like the producers, 
um, they can't get you approval to sing on a song if somebody doesn't want to let you, you know, like if Bruce Springsteen doesn't want you doing Born in the USA, you're not going to do it, you know. Um, so there is always that. So I think it's pretty special that they made him. And was it, uh, who was it that said they vouched for him? I think it was John Legend. Said John told, Legend, yeah. Yeah, said, told the Prince of State that he vouched for Cam to bail get. And so I'm excited for Cam because Cam was saying that that was his, his favorite uh, artist. You know, John Legend was his favorite living artist and, uh, and Prince was his favorite artist. So I'm, I'm really excited that he had the opportunity to do that. That's awesome. Well, you know, for all these artists, since you, especially because you know all of them, what do you think it's been like for them prepping, rehearsing, and then performing in these remote situations without the great voice band right there on stage? You know, I think the, the thing that makes it weird is when you're in the studio, there's all these amazing things happening and you're just kind of standing there and makeup people are putting makeup on you and you're sitting in a hair and they're doing, okay, before you go on, let me check. Okay, blah, blah, blah. How's your wardrobe? How's this? How's that? You know, the bands out there, you walk and you walk on, there's camera guys with these big, huge camera packs all around. I mean, and the funny part is like, I had some taste of it because I had to prep. Now I didn't get through, but I did have like, say a Zoom meeting with, you know, all the other contestants. I had a Zoom rehearsal with Blake where I sang a song for him that I was supposed to do in lies, but obviously I didn't make it through. And so I had some sense of that, of receiving the equipment, having to set it up. Um, also, you know, you had to have an assistant with you because it's hard to do it all yourself. So like me, I had my oldest daughter helping me out with it. So a lot, of, you'll hear people talk about like Thunderstorm mentioned that his wife was his assistant during the process. And because you really can't do it all by yourself. Um, I would say probably for me, in, in one way, um, it, I, I'd say the weirdest thing, like a lot of people are like, well, it's not really the same. I mean, it is, you're singing along to music. Because when I, when I was on stage, it didn't really feel like I was in a band. It felt like I was just singing along to music because the band wasn't around me. You know I mean? I'm used to a band surrounding me. So in this case, um, the way it works is, is the band prepares a track for you and then you're listening to it in your in-ear monitors. So that's why you're seeing in-ear monitors in your, that's where they're hearing the music. And the only thing that I find a little interesting is when they show people around them, that they, they can't hear the music. Because if, if you could hear the music, it would be coming through the microphone that's capturing your voice. So that's one little interesting tidbit about the show. Like last night, I believe Micah had, had some family and friends around him. And when they're sitting around him, all they're going to hear is him singing a cappella. They're not going to hear the music because that's in his ears. They don't want the music to come through his microphone or they can't capture his voice properly. So that's a little bit of television trickery, I guess you got there for you. But, but the reality is it still is like a live performance. Like what's live about the voice, even the, the earlier ones, is you have to get up on that stage and you have to perform that song from beginning to end in one take. And you have to, you know, if you screw it up, you screw it up. If you don't, you don't. That's it. And that's the same way it works at home. I mean, you have to just perform the song. So you, you're not in the studio where you can fix every little thing. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I have to hand it to these, the, all of these people, all the contestants. I mean, they've been doing a great job. And I, I feel like it's under difficult circumstances, too, because sometimes as a performer, like I know for me, when I was rehearsing for Blake, it just felt weird because like literally I got this tablet on a stand and Blake's sitting in his little wood room. He's like, all right, why don't you perform the song for me? And I'm like, okay, I stand up. And then he's like looking at my belly button. So I have to sit back down, you know, and, and I perform for him and he's like, all right. And I can kind of see him, but, but it's weird because you're not getting that audience reaction. I mean, the audience in the studio is not huge. I think it's like 500 people, but still you know, when there's a live audience and you're getting that, it, it brings a whole nother vibe to it. So I, I think they've amazingly overcame that. That I mean, in all honesty, I think the studio footage ultimately looks better because they can do so much more. But given the circumstances, I think they've really pulled it off nicely. So I'm really proud of them for doing that. And I'm really proud of all the contestants for what they've done, too. Well, I was going to ask you, do you think, you know, performing under these circumstances is really the full measure of these artists? Do you think that in the context of the voice, the audience is still, you know, able to judge and then vote fairly as compared to all the other seasons? Well, I mean, I think the, the key there is that the contestants are under the same circumstances. And I think for the most part, I mean, you can tell some people have homes that are more equipped for filming and, and doing stuff, you know. Um, Thunderstorm appears to have access to a little outside patio area or whatever that looks real nice. I mean, so maybe that's a slight disadvantage than, than when everybody's on the same thing. But, but at the same time, when you look at the live shows, like if you remember last season when they had the live shows in the studio, they had big sets and things going on that they were walking through. So it's always a little bit different for them. So I would say like, 
if half the contestants were doing at home and half were in the studio, I think that would be unfair. But I think as long as everybody's doing the same, you know, under the same conditions, it's about as fair as you can get. I mean, I, I think that's one of the things that's funny about the show is like a lot of times your fans will, will scream, hey, that's not fair or this is fair or that's fair. But the reality is it's kind of impossible to have a TV show and have every little aspect of it be completely fair. It just really, you know, doesn't, doesn't always work that way. And, you know, you have to understand that. And, um, and that's just part of the process, you know, so. Yeah, well, one thing we haven't talked about, and I, I agree with you, it is a level playing field. I think you made that point very well, since everyone has to perform remotely. I mean, granted, some of the backgrounds, the outdoor backgrounds are really grabbing me a lot, you know, just mm -hmm. the creativity and the candlelight and lights in the trees, like, that looks really cool from a production standpoint. But, you know, I think for the coaches, it's really changed the way they interact because the way, like, even right now, we can't talk over each other, yeah. you know? So it's like one at a time, one at a time. And, you know, sadly last night they had the one audio problem with Nick, mm -hmm. you know, you saw that, right? I was like, Oh yeah. no, it's been flawless up until now, but that's bound to happen. But I feel like, for the coaches also, this is a big adjustment and usually they're feeding off of each other's energy. There's a lot of back and forth and jostling and joking around, which is such a fun part of the show. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. I mean, what's your take on that having worked with Blake and, you know, being around the other coaches as well. And, and let's talk about Nick as a first timer as well. You know, I think, you know, as far as, as I would think, you know, I think the interaction between the contestant and the coaches, I mean, it's different because you're not in person, so you can't like hug them or something. But I think other than that, probably that's not terribly different. But I, I do feel like the interaction of those four chairs next to each other, that element is quite a bit different because there is a lot of the coaches feeding off of each other. I mean, certainly, you know, and one thing I forgot to mention, because you said, what you know, what's it like for the contestants and all this stuff, but man alive, they're, I know how busy I was just trying to prep one song and then, and when you're at home, you still have your life. So like work didn't necessarily shut off for me and whatever. So I can only imagine when they had to prep, like say three songs for lives and stuff like that, like that must've been a lot of work, but yeah, circling back to Nick. I mean, I think Nick's done, uh, done a really good job. I'm, I think he probably stands a good chance to win his first season because certainly Thunderstorm is, is obviously in the running. Well, all five of them are, but you know, I think Thunderstorm has been a strong contestant the whole year. So um, so yeah, so we'll see in a way, I, in a way, I don't want Nick to win cause I don't want him to be too cocky winning his first year, but, but I love thunderstorms. So I wouldn't say that, you know what I mean? I wouldn't, wouldn't, when I say, I don't want somebody to win, but that would just be a Nick thing for me. You know, I, I, I know Blake, you know, I, I, I was on Blake's team, so I have a tender heart for him and I know he hasn't won in a few seasons or whatever. So it's, you know, it'd be kind of nice to see uh, him pull it out, you know? Well, he had such a strong team and is borne out by the fact that he has Todd and Tanisha in the finale. He's the only coach that has two people. So I think, um, you know, I'm not going to make any predictions. I, almost every one of them is a favorite. I've had the pleasure of speaking with all of them quite extensively. And I, it, it's just been, you know, if, if I had to pick, I'm just not going to right now. I did mm -hmm. vote last night. <laughs> I'm going to be there tonight. I can't wait to see what happens. Um, you know, I, I also hope we never have a season like this again, <laughs> meaning I hope this, we get a little bit back to normal. If even, um, you know, people can perform on a stage again with more professional equipment, but I do think everyone has risen to the occasion in this final week at first the first week and i'm sure you agree with me todd it was a little little scary you know it's like yeah. oh no <laughs> yeah. what's happening here but i think they've definitely gotten more the hang of it you know but it was a whole new thing and i mean reality is they're doing it remotely so they're just telling you what to do and they're taking control of your computer you know and st it's so it was a very challenging situation realistically speaking i mean it's that's pretty tough but i i but I, I agree with you. It was kind of like, really? But then, then it got better. And so, I mean, ultimately, I feel like they pulled it off pretty well in a very difficult situation. Yeah. And tonight we can look forward to the coaches performing with their team members and also some 
some other, uh, you know, special musical guests. So I think it'll be a good one. But yeah, before yeah. we close off, I wanted to see, I know you told me you're putting the finishing touches on 14 new songs yourself. I wanted to hear, I know your, your band had to cancel tour this summer, but tell me what's going on with you musically. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously I sing for the band Riot 5 and we still have stuff going on. So we have a new album that we're recording. I'm supposed to get started on that too. But, you know, I, I have my solo music also. And I don't know what, after I performed on it, I just, and, and people really responded well to Jukebox Hero. And I feel so, um, and I don't know, and my business got shut down too. So I kind of had a lot of free time. And I think like most musicians, when you get in that situation, you kind of plow it into your craft. And um, and so I, I hooked up with a fellow named Kurt Vanderhoof and we wrote a bunch of songs together. And, and they're, in that, they're in that old school hard rock vein. So I'm really excited to get an album. It'll probably come out in the next few months because you need some time. And if people respond to it well enough, I'll get a chance to book some shows and make come out and perform for people live. That would be really fun. That would be great, Todd. I'm, unfortunately, the audio is kind of go here, and I know you have to get back to business. I have to get back to business. It's been a pleasure speaking with you again, and I will talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Hillary. Take care, Todd. Bye. Bye.